Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to go through four different medicinal plants and herbs that'll help you guys fight colds and flus, seeing as how cold and flu season is starting to come up. Now for each plant, we're going to go through a little bit of what they look like, and we're also going to talk about some of the ways that they can be used and some of the uses that they have. So without further ado, let's get started. There are two different types of Joe Pie Weed within the Eastern United States. One of them is called Sweet Joe Pie Weed, and the other one is Spotted Joe Pie Weed. This is called spotted joe pie weed because as you can see along the stem, you can see these reddish purplish spots or splotches that run all up and down the length of the stem. Now sweet joe pie weed does not have this feature, so that's something to keep in mind. However, both of these plants are both usable in the same way. Now some of the uses of this plant, like I said earlier, you can use this plant to help induce sweating for colds or flus, and it will help you to sweat. Most eupatorium species like bone set will also do the same thing. And a lot of eupatoriums after they've been studied and laboratory tests have been found to have a lot of immune boosting qualities. So that's something else to keep in mind and that corroborates with a lot of historical uses for this plant for colds and flus. As far as using this plant, you can use the leaves and you can use the root. However, there are also historical documents that report various Native American tribes using the entire plant for teas or washes or decoctions. So keep that in mind as well, that there are not only different ways to use this plant, but you can use the majority of this plant for what you need it for. As far as the flowers on Joe Pie Weed, both of them have like a purple to pink kind of flower. It's similar to iron weeds, so it's like this magenta sort of color, whereas Bone Set has a white flower. So that's something else to keep in mind, that if you see a plant with really huge flower clusters like this, and it has purple or pink flowers, it's most likely a Joe Pie Weed. And as you can see now, these flowers have already gone and died. There's nothing left except brown. There's no colors, there's no distinguishing colors left in these flowers. However, the distinct shape of this plant should be more than enough for you to be able to identify it because it is a really easy plant to identify and it doesn't have any toxic lookalikes to my knowledge. The only lookalike it does have is Bone Set and they do share some similar uses. So that's kind of a good thing actually. We have a bunch of bone set plants. Here you can see this bone set plant and it's just past its flowering stage. As you can see here, these flowers are starting to die off. The leaves have been getting chewed up by ants as you can see here. However, this is bone set and this is another medicinal plant. This plant was one of the most important medicinal plants of the 18th century in colonial America. So this plant is extremely important. This plant has been used historically to help treat break bone or dengue fever. It also can be used as a poultice on top of the skin for rheumatism in a drastic survival situation for the short term. You don't want to use this long term because this plant can cause damage if used too long for too, peri for too long of a period of time. And there you can see the distinct perforation that's caused by this stem through the leaves on bone set. And another common name for this plant is thoroughwort, which it gets that name because the stem perforates or goes through the leaves. Bone set is a really nice medicinal plant. One of the things I like about bone set, I like to use it more for colds and flus and to kind of help promote sweating and I like to use it in a tincture form. However, it can be used in a tea form, but whenever it's given warm, it can promote diarrhea or help to evacuate the bowels, which can be good if that's what you need. So keep that in mind if you think about using this plant. And then if we turn around, we can see more bone set right there next to Canadian goldenrod. Here you can see this really nice flower cluster of Canadian goldenrod. You can also see some of this morning glory vine kind of growing along and twining around with it. Canadian goldenrod is well known for its ability to take over fields and it's also well known for its ability to cause allergies. However, a lot of people who think they're having goldenrod allergies, they're actually experiencing allergies from the ragweed. However, this plant's pollen can cause allergies and some people are allergic to it. But this is another great medicinal plant. This plant can be used for fevers. This also can be used as an expectorant. It can help with colds. This is a really good plant to know, just in case you're in a survival situation. Just because the dried flowers make a really nice tea, the fresh flowers make a delicious tea as well. It doesn't taste too bad. Another nice thing about Canadian goldenrod is that it will exist anywhere there's usually clearing or sunlight. I found this plant in the middle of the woods where there's just some sunlight peeking through the forest canopy. I found Canadian goldenrod growing. This plant can grow pretty much anywhere to my experience, so that's kind of a good thing. 
So if you go to harvest any, you're probably not going to be hurting very much if you just take a few plants. There are many varieties of coneflower, and up until the 1980s, studies that were thought to be done on angustifolia were actually done on another echinacea variety, Echinacea pallida. This is because coneflowers will hybridize easily with one another, and also the rutabecchia family, making it hard at times to determine what exactly is what. Regardless of which, the coneflower is world-renowned for its immune-boosting properties and its ability to stop most colds and flus dead in their tracks when combined with bone set and or golden seal. It has a long history of use within the United States to the natives of the plains who use this plant extensively for snake bites and septicemia. On the frontier, it was used for poisonous spider bites, gangrene, and other bacterial infections that were hard to treat, and at one time was the most widely used medicinal plant in North America. The three most common varieties are Angustifolia, Pallida, Purpurea, and are all used interchangeably, with Purpurea being the one you are probably used to taking if you have bought modern synthesized versions of Echinacea. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.